So welcome everybody. <clears throat> I love that you're here. So depending on where you are in the world, maybe your afternoon, your evening, or your morning, we'll just arrive, arrive first, relax. Take a deep breath. You welcome everything. Welcome, welcome all the thoughts, all the feelings. Welcome the peace that's possible. The peace that is here already all the time. but welcoming all those disturbed thoughts and feelings. We want to understand them. We're open. I'm just seeing today what wants to come forward, what wants to be heard. Feeling it in your body. So often, the first place we feel it, don't even know what the mind is saying yet. It's a disturbance, a clench, mild or strong, a no, I'm against it, quick. Just noticing that. Letting it be there. And seeing what wants to come. Where have I had that feeling? Recently or long ago? Anywhere is okay. Taking a look at that moment. With this amazing mind, power of the mind, incredible. loves to ask questions and loves to answer them too. Nothing missing. I have what's needed here to rest with this experience, with this memory, with this relationship, with this condition. I have what it takes. So welcoming it in, we just see. I love we can narrow it down. Just let one, one condition, one situation be present. The mind gets so filled, there's so many things, there's such a long list of what I don't like, what's a threat. But as if we're scanning, scanning our lives and we see the movie, things playing and replaying, and get stuck on replay, where has it gotten stuck? So first step, first step is just seeing, welcoming, letting it all be here, allowing it to be here, the disturbance. And then, oh, what a relief, just sitting with one thing, one thing I wanna take a look at. One relationship, one exchange I found difficult. Something that lit a, lit a fire in me in a nervous way. Something that really disturbed me. Okay to have it come. I'm safe right now as I replay 
this scene, this moving image, safe in the moment to wonder about this. Let us see what it is. There's that person, that situation, that condition, that activity. Seeing that, pausing on the moment as if I have a really fine-tuned, amazing, big screen video player. So the mind is like that. And I can push pause right on the moment where I feel some disturbance. Just push pause there. I feel so much like part of the mind wants to pass that over real quick. Just get through this. So looking and we'll see if we put words. So amazing. Not even sure what I'm thinking, but here's this disturbance. If I slow down and listen, there may be words, communication, saying something. So next step, welcome, find the situation. Take a moment and now we're going to write. So meditation, a, a judge your neighbor worksheet meditation, seeing what's here, really letting it be here unedited, letting all the, the voices and the sounds, the words I hear in my head the pictures I see, letting them be here to see what it is we're, we're working with. I'm afraid. I'm anxious. I'm bored. I'm frustrated. All these feelings coming under the umbrella of stressful feeling. I feel against what is. So in that situation, let's trust the situation that rises. It's the one. Okay, if it's been done before, I've looked at it before, maybe it's brand new, I'm just noticing. In this situation, what is the thing I'm most disturbed by? What's the offense? What's the crime? What's happened that I don't like? And if I kept my words very simple, I'm upset in this moment that I'm looking at because How would I describe it? How would I say that? Here's what I don't like. I can write that down. <clears throat> my number one, my opposition. Okay, to see what the emotion is, sad, frightened, nervous, troubled, you know, I'm troubled, whatever your trouble is. I love that we have all those different words for emotions. Troubled in that situation because. Just listen. Mm -hmm. 
no perfect thought to find, no right thought to find, just the one that comes. Okay for it to be simple. So how do you want that, what you're looking at, to change? How do you want it to change? What do you want it to do, that person, that condition? It's my argument with the moment. I want, so let it be a demand if it's a demand. Anything that comes, welcome here. You can want that person to do, that condition, that thing. And you can notice, you know, I'm against, I'm against. And if you have a strong tendency to be against what you are doing, yourself. Just notice that you're in a conversation with reality. As you are against yourself, there's also what seems to be not you. And take a look at that. Okay to notice all of it's happening at the same time together just want to see what's outside of me that I'm disturbed by. So helpful to find. So I want that to change. I'm seeing reality, I'm seeing life in this moment. Something inside said no, so how do I want it to change? Three. So what advice would you give? It's almost like the next thing that comes in the mind. What would you offer? What would you recommend what you're looking at to help it be different, to help it make that change, to help it do what would be more comfortable? that person what would support them changing uh, they should it should it shouldn't the plan, like the mind loves to go into what, what could be the solution? What would be the plan? What's my advice, my recommendation?
Number four, needs. What do I really need in this situation in order to be happy? I love that we get to see, wow, happy. To be happy in this situation? Hadn't even occurred to me that that was possible. Without even thinking, well, that isn't possible. Just letting your imagination go. What do you need from the world, from that moment, from reality, from that person, in order for you to be happy? Whatever happiness fits in this moment, very calm, peaceful, clear, joyful. Relaxed. What do I need from what I'm seeing for me to be happy if that happened? Oh, that'd be amazing. I need, I need that person to, and even subtle, I need that thing, that condition to do, say, think, be, feel. What do I need it to do? What do I need them to do? And see if you gave yourself enough of what you need. If they said these words, if they did this, then I'd be okay. Even happy. So number five, back with that trouble, connecting with the trouble, the no, I don't like it. What do you think of what you're looking at? What do you think of them? What do you think of it? Just unedited. Let the feeling speak. They are, it is. What do I think of them? Make a list, Some, a few words. And the very last prompt, what is it in this situation you never want to experience again? If you had your way, if it could go the way that it would feel safe, I don't ever, don't ever want to experience
that never happened again. I'd like that. <laughs> I don't ever want. Okay. So the gold of having our stressful beliefs on paper. They're not going anywhere. I can pin them down and come back. Let it take us all the time it needs to take. It doesn't have to happen on any special timeline. But who would like to do the work? So you can raise hand. Ah, Sarah, yay. And anyone who wants to follow along with this too, you can share in the chat. Like if you do the same piece of work that Sarah's doing, just share. All right, Sarah. So maybe, you know, read what you wrote. And you can tell us the situation briefly too. So the situation is I'm standing in line for my COVID vaccine. Mm. Um, the thought is he is the cause of my suffering. I want him to validate my hurt. He shouldn't avoid me. He should own that he hurt me. He should say he's sorry. He should mean it from deep down. I need him to comfort me. He is gone, uncaring, heartless, mean, scary, damaging. I never want to blame myself for being harmed by someone else again. Mm. And you see those images too of him being how he is. Yeah. Is that happening in the line, in the COVID line? Yeah. It's right there. Okay. 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 Well, say number one again. He is the cause of my suffering. Okay. And I do want to say something about this. I don't know. Yeah. The real thought here is that like, is like, I'm like protesting. I'm like, no, it's not my thoughts that are the problem. <laughs> He's my problem. <laughs> like that's the thought. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yes. Okay. Let it be there. He's my problem. Yeah. <laughs> this can be just difficult. <laughs> yeah. so have, have this, you know? Okay. He's the problem. Yeah. And I mean, is there anything that stands about out about what he's done, said, acted like, anything, any words that just like the most simple words that might be there that that you're it's really just an image. I just have I'm just like I just have this like persistent image of him in my head. And it like very much like evokes the sensations of what it's like to be with him, only it's like a mean version of him. Okay. All right. Okay. So everyone can find there's that mean person. Find a mean person in your life. Maybe you just wrote about them. <laughs> or the, the mean world, or the mean, you know, cruel, mean condition. You're thinking this with cancer. Right. So that. In this case, him, him, he is the cause of my suffering. He's my problem. Is that true?
Once you find your no there. Just that he's not there. Hmm. And even that I can feel his meanness and his impact on me in this moment and like there's just also a felt sense of like flow and like mm. it's not real it's amazing and everyone just noticed no right or wrong answer if you had a yes, that is that is a problem. That's a problem in this world. That's a problem in my life. And I absolutely know that that's the truth. No shadow of a doubt. Absolute truth. And I know that. It's not about going into denial. I hear Sarah said, no. So what happens when you think that thought, Sarah? He is the cause of my suffering. He is a problem. I feel so fixated on him, on solving. I really don't believe I can I'm just so attached to the belief. I'm just so attached to it. And then and then there's a sense that I should do something to disrupt it. Hmm. See if what would be unsafe about not having it. Doesn't mean you should not have it. Mm -hmm. You have it. That's the reality, you have it. What would be dangerous about not having this belief? He's the cause of my suffering. I think there's a scarier belief that I'm alone and I'd rather be hurt by someone that's meaningful to me, I'm alone. Like I'd rather, I'd rather, argue, I'd rather believe this than the other. So that empty space, if the belief wasn't there, I'd be all alone. I'm just good to see that image is in there with the thought wondering about the thought, seeing the image of him, not too sure about not having the thought, this could be worse. See how that feels in the body. It is a problem. really is something familiar. There's something very like familiar. There's like a familiar mix of like love and hurt. And it's like,
it really feels like the best me I can be, both loving and heard. Mm. Mm. Like I'm struck by how me that feels like. Mm -hmm. And now I'm seeing images of like mom and family. Yeah. So powerful to notice the other things that have been like this. Yeah. I recognize this. Recognize. You know, re cognize. Yeah. He's yeah. the cause of my suffering. I can't even can't I've never experienced this before. I'm like this is me. And it's not me. It's just experience I've had, but I'm like, this me me is I've loved and I'm hurt. That's me. Yeah. Yeah. My identity is the one who loves and the one who is hurt. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't get better than this. This is as good as it gets because at least there's love. Uh, yeah. Can you absolutely know that that's true? doesn't get better than this. This is it. Love mixed with hurt. No. It's good to notice. I don't know. I can't know that that's true. Love how the mind says this is permanent. Felt it many times. That means it's going to continue. So that person, he is the cause of my suffering. I'm seeing the people lined up behind him. Cause of my suffering. They're a problem. Who would you be without the story? And let's say it's safe. It's safe to just wonder for a moment what it would be like to not have that story. Say it's safe because we don't know for sure if it would be lonely and worse. Without the story, he is my problem. He is a cause of my suffering in that situation. Without the story of finding anything to blame. There's this woman in line in front of me and she keeps like checking in with me and giving me little updates. Noticing the kindness of the, the connection to the moment. You're not alone, <laughs> turns out. Yeah, I feel like I love her. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, she's, she seems interested and like, um, careful, like doesn't want to like bother me, but interested. <laughs> Her
her boyfriend seems interested too, but he's playing it a bit cooler, but he seems interested too. <laughs> She's not alone. Mm-hmm. Just can leave my house and make friends. And then just see. So noticing that moment, noticing the the kindness of the situation, the easiness, the softness, nothing too much, not too little. And then just see that picture of the one who I'm holding as the cause of suffering. Just bringing, who would I be? Who would I be? What is here? What would I be without that story? Without denial. more self-compassion emerges and like actually just compassion as much as for me as for him too Mm -hmm. do you notice how that compassion just rises it's just there doesn't say i should be compassionate Just awareness, wondering what is here without my thoughts, that that's the problem. I also am like, like incontrovertibly connected to him. Like I don't even miss him. I'm just, we're so connected. It's like, it doesn't even. Mm. I don't need anything from him. It's like the opposite of alone. You can even picture those other people who were the cause of your suffering. And just wondering with them even. Same. Yeah. They're yeah. like they're so with me so a part of me there's no alienation I feel like strong in that like mm-hmm. I feel like I feel like um, I have them mm-hmm. here in my heart I have them can't be undone. Yeah. So let's turn it around. He's the cause of my suffering. Let's say my thinking, you know, that's how we can turn it around to the self. Yeah. My thinking is the cause of my suffering. Without blaming thought. My thinking, my unquestioned thinking, my story. It's a suffering story, so I feel suffering when I tell it. So hard for blame not to. Yeah. Doesn't mean I did it wrong. Doesn't mean there's something wrong with my mind. The mind just doing what it does, human, human being human being with a mind that thinks, not in charge of the mind, really can't do it wrong. What if you really had that thought, wow, 
I can't do this wrong with this person. The mind can't do it wrong. It's just awareness. And believing, yeah. yeah. Even appreciation for the mind putting the cause of suffering over there. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was safer. <laughs> it was safer. <laughs> Keeps it off me. <laughs> I, th I thought it kept it off me, except for not that much. <laughs> Just doing its best doing its best to be innocent, to try to prove innocence and just letting it be, it is innocent, just doing its little job. My story, I'm telling a story and it causes suffering inside this body, you know, inside my awareness. What I can see is um, the blame is still there, but I can see that too. I can see that as a cause of suffering too. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So when I'm think of it like um, the exorcist movie when the, the devil or whatever it is suddenly goes into her and then suddenly goes out of her. <laughs> That's the cause of my suffering. No, wait. <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's also like some grasping after the, the like energy that you described as like just naturally emerging. Uh, yeah, felt so good. I want it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's my thinking, it just goes, it's so amazing. Such a powerful energy thought. And just noticing it's taken up a lot of space. It's sort of stepped forward as number one. <laughs> and what if it is not, not as powerful as we think? Because I can wonder about it. Just my story that I, I tell, the images, the remembering, the proof, and all the time I really don't know. I can't absolutely prove it. It's okay, apparently, not to know. So really only experiencing suffering in a moment, as my thoughts seem to be in that part of the story. Like even in this moment, in response to what you're saying, it's like all this vague psychological dust is getting kicked up. And but I really can like hold and witness that like thinking, like the discomfort I feel is like clearly in relationship to my thinking, you know? Yes. Yeah. I keep getting this image of Katie saying when someone asked, why me? And she said, I asked myself that question. And my answer was be cause. Mm. Like, I can see my, I can see myself being cause, but it feels empowering, not like blame. Mm. <laughs> That's sweet. Yeah. So, another turnaround. He is the cause of my suffering. He's a problem. I'm the cause of his suffering. Mm. So same thing without, without mm -hmm. a slap, a kiss and not a slap. Just noticing.
So I'm projecting him in this particular way. I'm not sure if it would make any difference. Like, I'm not sure if I would do anything different or like reach out to him or something if I felt more in a state of compassion, but I really believe it would make a difference in his life somehow if I held that. He's worthy of love. Mm. I guess I just know that I'm like, I'm I'm the cause of his suffering. I'm still finding that without blame, I'm just seeing his perspective, you know. The eyes he's looking through, the life he's looking from, the memories and experience he's seeing you through. what he thinks is missing, what he wants, whatever suffering is. And I love just holding it with such humility in a way, just I'm the cause of his suffering. In some ways you could find, who knows, I'm not in someone else's mind or life and can I find it yeah, that I'm where I've, if I'm believing he's a problem, that could be, <laughs> that could be uh, disturbing, disturbing the force, <laughs> disturbing the energy. I'm just going to turn that off. And honestly, I feel like it's 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 an easy thought to find the turnaround, but I'm finding it's a hard space to go to. Like I can feel the energetic. So I'm just. It's like the thought is like, we were so important to one another. Like there's no way it doesn't matter how I mm. feel about him. Mm. Which sounds so beautiful, you know, very connected, deeply loving. Any of that other is temporary. Yeah. Just like noticing that um, the pair of glasses that I have on when they say that person's a problem, you know, and I'm holding that so quickly, so rapidly, no wrong, just doing, oh, well, no wonder, you know. But that sort of throws out something, who knows. And beautiful to see, it's all okay, it doesn't matter. So much love. The turnaround. It's such contrast between the like, my felt sense of like insignificance in the first one, and then like my 
profound significance in the second one. And it's not an ego thing. It's just like, it just feels true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This person matters so much. That's why they've come up. That's why I'm here doing this work. And the opposite. He is not the cause of my suffering. This one feels easy to find in the um, in the uh, just what you said about that energy naturally rising thing. It's like it's just like it really is just like my work isn't done yet. That's all. Like I just can't always access that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm so willing. Like, that's such a, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. the real payoff, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Might even be just happening because it's like, here it is again. He's the cause of my suffering. Oh, frequent reminder. <laughs> <laughs> okay that it happens often <laughs> isn't my deepest my deepest desire to be in touch with loving what is it doesn't so mean funny. i even hear that expression differently in this moment like i i never realized it before but i always heard it as like an injunction or like a task that I needed to learn how to do but loving what is is like it's gold <laughs> like it's a wonderful experience to have you know yeah. yeah and already already what we know that's what's amazing already loving what is just didn't realize it And, you know, you don't realize it, probably won't realize it again. I'm open to not realizing it. Okay. Here comes the, the contents of the world and reality and the mind doing its job saying, I like it, I don't like it. I like that. I don't like that. <laughs> and behind all of it. You need to be this. Yes. Should be like that, should be like this. I like the turnaround uh, with this one. He is the cause of my, what's the opposite of suffering for you? Wholeness. Cause of my wholeness. Healing, actually. Healing. Yeah. I mean, what an amazing, what an amazing living turnaround. Yeah. This person, this condition, this objection I have is the cause of my healing. Could that be true? One of my big complaints was like, but I've never loved somebody so much my whole life. It was like, It's like that needed to be a part of it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I 
Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't have been so motivated. Yeah, every little element, just right. Love that. Wouldn't have been so motivated. So great. <laughs> just also like really feel that feeling of like I'm so grateful it was him like, like I really do love him so much like I'm so glad it was like him that like has um like deepened um, my experience of this a gift like from him yeah or absolutely yeah i love it it's beautiful sarah just a thank you thank you thank you to him thank you to you thank you to me <laughs> So, any feedback? What did you find? You follow along with that yourself. I found that I wanted to fall into a heap of gratitude at the end. And I just, I just felt so much love for you both. Thank you so much. Yeah, Sarah. Oh, hang on, you're still on mute. There you go. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. Another Sarah. That uh, deep gratitude for that. Um, yeah, I had something that was had been living in my head and um, taking up a lot of space. And when I really looked at it, it was like, I was making up this story about this other person and that I really had, had to step back and look at, wow, this is about me. This is not about her, it's about me. It's about, it's about not in a blaming way, but just, no, th this is good, this is good. It brought me to the light of, of um, I have work to do, that's all. Earth school, Earth school. That's that, that's good. That's good. I'm here on Earth. <laughs> but that love that poured out of, of you was just so uh, wonderfully. Um, it it just sunk into my heart in a such such a you know beautiful way. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? And if someone's ready to do the work, next. You can volunteer. I just wanted to say, Sarah, thank you for your work. I came in, um, I came in just as you had gotten started and, um, It's funny to think that I'm either the one who gets hurt or the one who loves. I don't know who I would be without either one of those dynamics happening and operating. And I know you did a really beautiful session and I have a lot of gratitude, but I also feel like it's quite sad. Mm. There's a there's an emotion in me that I would identify as sadness and that's my stuff. What, what came up in me is how for some reason there's some, there's like, Oh, life is so beautiful. You know, we love these people and they come and they help us grow and then they go or not. And it's, 
it's really beautiful, but my mind identifies it as sad. Yeah. That's all. Thank you for sharing that. And, you know, just let it be there, of course. It just sounded like exactly what you were doing. Sad. No right way to be. No wrong way to be. And just noticing heartbreak. Heartbreak. And the strangeness of just true, just grief, heartbroken, open, heartbroken, open with the coming and going, finding and losing. Yeah, Claire. Hi, Sarah. I thought it was so cool when you when you found a no because um he can't be the cause of your suffering because he's not there and I was yeah it was like oh yeah <laughs> it's, it's not he's not making me suffer right now you know it's just like well what's left and it's yeah it's those things those thoughts yeah thank you uh I love it when it's just like, oh, right. <laughs> I love Donnie sharing, as I was doing my work, Katie's words came to mind. I know everyone loves me. I just don't expect them to know that yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah. I just want to say to Eleni, um, that my want on the list is I want someone to validate how I feel. And there's just something very sweet about you acknowledging the heartbreak aspect too, that like, it's like you just, you just did a bit of a living turnaround for me. Like that girl in the line who's like, I just want somebody to see that I'm hurting right now. It's like, thank you. Yeah, my work too. Thanks for validating my sadness, Grace and Sarah. So welcome. What's the reality? There it is. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful work. Mm. So time for another. Who's ready? Wants to take your take the situation through the four questions. Yeah, Claire, awesome. If no one else is, <laughs> I jump at the chance. So yesterday I was just in downtown and a, a lady came up to me asking for money who, um, who has, I haven't seen in, in a several couple years, I think. And, I was kind of shocked that she's still begging for money and it made me feel really uncomfortable. She made me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Not really. <laughs> okay, so the, the first one is, um, well, I didn't really know how to put it into words, but I don't like her asking me for money. Mm -hmm. Should I read them all or just one? Yeah, go ahead and read them. Yeah, go ahead and keep yeah. um, So I want her to be past that. I want her to be self-sufficient. I want her to ask somebody else. I want her to go away. I want her to, um, she should get a job, stop being miserable. <laughs> she should stop begging for money. She should find out what will really make her happy. She should discover God within. Um, <laughs> I don't want to turn these around. <laughs> I want it for me to be happy in that situation. I need her to be healed from her pitiful situation. I need there to be no more poor people, no more beggars in the world. I need her to connect on a deeper level with me, you know, not just asking for money and not me just giving something. Um, she's pathetic, stuck in her negative situation. 
she's an incurable beggar. <laughs> um, I don't ever want to experience being so incapable of really helping someone again. I don't ever want to experience being incapable of helping someone change their life. Yeah, and I, I guess I don't want, I, I also wrote, I don't want to experience people asking me for something. I can't give up, which is a little bit of an old story there. <laughs> Good. So beautiful. And everyone picture Claire's situation. You can also find your own, like, I think just looking. Um, um, that person should stop doing that. Yeah. Stop doing that. You've got it all right there, you know, right in front of you, asking, begging for money, being that way in their life. You should stop. And this might fit also on the worksheet that you all wrote. Just follow along. Let it be your own work too. You should stop doing that. Is that true? No. So what happens when you think it? Stop asking, stop begging, stop being here like this. What happens when you think that thought? I feel like some mean energy, like, like meanness is coming out of me towards her. Mm -hmm. Like judgment, you know, like a judgmental, um, yeah, meanie. <laughs> Somebody mm -hmm. turns me into, I turn myself into a, a judge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Like noticing that comes in as a response to to something, you know, just here's the judge. No emotions. Get away. Stop. No. Clinch. Mm -hmm. Don't. Wrong. Barrier. It's kind of like don't disturb me, you know, like yeah. I set up a barrier. I I don't want this thing. Yeah, I don't want. Yeah. I see that I see it as a threat. Yeah. Something's threatening me. I have to protect myself from this person. Yeah. So powerful to notice the fear that is Yeah. Yeah. Fear. There's no reason. Yeah. I get judgmental when I'm afraid. Yeah. She should stop. She should stop begging. She should stop suffering. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. so just notice the pictures that you have of her life. You know, you see her still there, was there before. Mm. What you think it means that she's asking for money. What does that mean about her and her life? That it sounds scary. Those pictures are scary to you. Hmm. I guess the scary, scary is the image of her like following me around, like all bent over in rags and just following me 
never resting, you know, just, <laughs> just on my heels the whole time. Funny. Wanting, wanting, wanting. Yeah. Just can't get rid of her. <laughs> Don't you love it? There it is. It's a person, just the perfect symbol of wanting and begging. Yeah. Away. Longing. It should stop. Yeah. Mm. You see it just following me everywhere. She should stop. Wow, yeah, I have this picture, right, really picture of <laughs> desire demands, demands on me, just never ending, you know. Mm -hmm. And see how you treat yourself when there's demands on you, wanting, wanting, wanting. How do you treat yourself? I am the one who escapes good i'm the one who needs to get out of here yeah <laughs> need to get away from this i'm the one who's scared of this what's the worst that could happen if you if you stayed present with this wanting person she would ask she would want my address and she would call me every day for the next 100 years <laughs> just hound me you know it's like totally get into my life and i couldn't get rid of her so good hounding can't get rid of her i don't like it you know i resist i'm against this yeah. Almost like that. What's the worst that could happen? It would just endlessly be continuing. Right. Without it, it, it's not stopping. But what's not stopping? This, the asking and the wanting is not stopping. Yeah. And I'm, my resistance is not stopping either. <laughs> mm. Just noticing mm. seems dangerous and endless. And feeling the feeling of having to give something also um, continues yeah. on and on. Yes. Kind of where my mind went with what's the worst that could happen if I need to give her stuff. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The begging, the only way it'll stop is if she receives something from me. And I'm afraid, it, I'm still afraid it won't stop. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's the, it's the feeling of um, being out of control. Mm -hmm. She's gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna take away my control. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, that's very alarming, yeah dominating me. I'm the small thing and she's mm. larger. So who would you be without that story? He has to stop for me to be happy. Who would you be without that story and just stay still in her presence? You can pause it without movement. If you don't know anything about the future. Who would I be without the thought, the asking, the wanting, the begging, the longing, it has to stop. Being that way has to stop. There are no more levels, like 
higher or lower between us. Just, just two women meeting. If she's asking a question, I can say yes or no. Okay, with a yes or a no, no wrong way to be with this question. <clears throat> Wanting, totally free, yes or a no. Kind of free, I think it, it's still a little bit hanging on the, I have to say yes, and I have to, mm. I have to change something in our life, you know, that kind of feeling. Yeah. But if, yeah, get rid of that feeling. Noticing that thing come in, like this can't, I have to, I have to Let's see what if I didn't, you know, what, who would I be? Anything that the mind comes up with, it's just, okay. Mm -hmm. Who would I be without that story? It's dangerous to be in the presence of this person mm -hmm. who's begging, who's filled with longing. It looks like. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't have a choice. I think. Mm -hmm. So good to notice how power mm -hmm. feel powerless in this moment. Yeah. Who would I be without that story? Yeah, it's like she she is taking away my my freedom in that moment because she knows that I'm going to have to give it to her. <laughs> it's like she, if she looks at me that one way, then I can't say no. I just see it's so good to realize uh, who is yeah. showing up with that story, her or me. Right. It already existed. She actually didn't say, she actually didn't ask me for money. <laughs> she said, I would be happy for a contribution. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did she follow you around? No. <laughs> well, I gave her some. <laughs> <clears throat> just noticing, you know, just noticing I gave it. And what if I did that and it wasn't because I was obliged, I had to, I was forced. Mm. What if that just, without my thoughts about the moment, Somebody asked and I gave. Missed how how kind and willing I was. Mm. You know, it's 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 true. I mean, I prepare these little coupons that people can use um, for money, and and then it's kind of like. If somebody asks me for money, I give them one of those. They can go buy food and stuff. <clears throat> and that feels kind to me. What doesn't feel kind is when I give it to them out of this fear or out of just wanting to feel better about myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then I think that's more like um, it's not a gift. <laughs> It's more like I'm, <laughs> it's more like I'm, I want something from them. I want them to make me feel good. Yeah. I want them to, they, they stop suffering and stop wanting. I'll feel better. Yeah. I don't have to see them as begging. <laughs> which she wasn't even begging. <laughs> Just 
just asked a question. <laughs> I don't even have to answer the question. I'm just looking, being there. Amazing to see. Who would I be without my story? So I have to stop begging, wanting, and asking for her to stop, especially. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Even asking myself to make sure I always give or whatever the rules are. <laughs> yeah. I have to stop doing that. Mm. That would be kinder. <laughs> so much kinder. Such kindness to let yourself walk down the street in freedom. Yes. <clears throat> And in the presence of somebody or, or any wanting, like, I don't know, my own wanting. Mm. My own craving and begging and wanting and believing I have to have something in order to be happy. Yeah. I stop being against that and be gentle with myself. Thank you. So, so wanting me to be kind, like, you know, you've got to be kind. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Be at peace. Be kind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey. If it worked, we'd, we'd do it by now, but it doesn't seem to work. <laughs> yeah, that's what I saw about her too, is if she, you know, if she could not ask for money, she, she would. Maybe it's kind of something fun. Maybe it's not something pitiful. It's more like a way to, con to connect with people. What an, uh, what an amazing and courageous thing to ask. Yeah. Humble, you know. And she's doing her job, being the asker. Yeah. I'm not willing to, to ask. So mm -hmm. that somebody is. Oh, I'm doing it, yeah. Or I'm noticing my own asking, you know, for it all to stop. Mm -hmm. But I like that turnaround look to the self. Like in this situation, human being appears who's asking, and I want to stop begging myself mm -hmm. to do whatever I'm doing in the moment. I want to be okay with my own wanting. Yeah, wanting to help people. <clears throat> wanting to be the good Samaritan, <laughs> yeah. not the one that walks away. That's sweet. I like being in this world, you know, freely wanting wanting and accepting all at the same time the great paradox of it and what's the reality mm -hmm. wanting comes out of people <laughs> yeah it's so good to see that i i hadn't seen that you know i hadn't seen my wanting yeah in that situation yeah i think it's over there that person's doing all the wanting it's bad <laughs> yeah Right. I'm doing the giving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I love that Anne shared. She brings me to my work. What courage and humility she has to take this role for me. Mm. Helping me. Yes. 
And Donnie, without my fear, begging will never stop. Hmm. The victim of the story and living with fear, I feel my heart open. I'm willing to give even more than ask. Mm. Wow. Yeah, I actually let myself see if I really want to give it or not. Like what I want. I mean, if it, there's no should at all, should or shouldn't. To find out if it's a yes or a no in any given moment. That's scary to me. It's like, how am I going to know? How am I going to know? <laughs> so just a, a slowing down, you know, mm -hmm. relaxing. Mm. Relaxing helps us know, just know. And maybe she's giving me more than I give her. So I don't. <laughs> I love the turnaround. I don't want her to stop. Yeah. I don't want that. Why not? How, what's an example? I actually don't want her to stop. Yeah, because I want more freedom. <laughs> right. Yes. I want to be free in this situation, in the, in the human mm -hmm. story of Asking and giving and receiving yeah. and offering. And I see when when you said to slow it down, it's like, yeah, I just quick, I feel like I have to quick get money out of my, you know, I quick have to find the money and quick give it to her and then ah, it'll be okay. You yeah. know, it's like this, oh my God. Yeah. So of course there's no time to, there's no time yeah to be with each other yeah yeah if i just um imagine like just looking and being with this person and stopping and waiting to see without fear if it's a yes or a no yeah that sounds revolutionary <laughs> oh. it's like my whole body is shaking because inside it's like, whoa, <laughs> I don't know. I love seeing just it's so scary of compassion for yourself. So scary to imagine letting yourself be, you know, somebody just equal to be receiving this question and then seeing what happens next. Yeah. No, no danger just noticing um, no threat no threat she wasn't standing there with a pistol i mean <laughs> really not i was I, there was one behind me i'm sure <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah pointed at your own head right <laughs> like yeah oh yeah my own inner perpetrator, you know, or fear, the one that's frightened. And okay, you know, just like kindness mm -hmm. has that. It was, it's been in there, it came alive as a protection. Mm -hmm. Not um, mm -hmm. not current to the moment here. It's just echoes of, of the past. Mm -hmm. And of Donnie saying, I need to stop begging her to stop begging. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Being free is up to me. And I need her to keep on begging, not stop, just keep doing it. Maybe that's her, her path, you know? Yeah. Not maybe, it is. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Until it isn't. <laughs> yes. You know, I'm willing to meet the person begging, even myself, begging it for it to be different. I'm willing to meet that without fear. I'm willing. I'm willing to, even if I have some fear. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. I 
look forward to mm -hmm. living, wanting, longing, desire in the human condition. It's also in me. I want to make peace with that. Yeah. Quality of life. I want to make peace with this moment. I love that. It's also a nice living turnaround. I want this at where I am right now to be enough. Mm. Right here is okay. Right here is enough. With or without the thing that I am longing for. It doesn't have to stop. It doesn't have to start. I'm okay. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you for everybody, everyone, for your comments. Yeah. And Anne, what a great thing to notice. I have a deep fear of being that needy or being that needy or dependent. Mm. We're not supposed to be that way. So this work's showing me that even that situation could be a gift to myself mm. and others. Yeah. yeah. Okay to be a human being who wants sometimes. Hmm. Not wrong to want. Hmm. Are you sure? <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> well, I like noticing that wanting comes out of a thought. Right? Yeah. Not all of who we are. Not dangerous to want. Because what can you control it? <laughs> are you in charge of sometimes wanting so much that you or just find it overwhelming how much you want something. Mm -hmm. So beautiful to question it. Yeah. And find freedom so it's not compelling and just uh, have to. Mm. And Ludo, thanks for your comment. Touched by Claire's work. Mm. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here in this meditation. Enjoy whatever living turnaround comes out of it. <laughs> Thanks, Claire. Thank you. Lots of love, everybody. See Thank you, Grace. Thank, Thank you. you.